Spencer, you have such a proud history with the Ferrari brand. Tell us, how did it all start for you? Well, you won't believe this, Mark, but um, uh, in the mid-50s, I lived in uh, Chesterfield Road, Epping, and there was, a, there was a guy there named Nino Sasholotti, and he had a Ferrari, and this was like about 1955. And uh, that's when uh, there was Austins and Morrises and things running around, and this Ferrari uh, arrived, and it was like a spaceship, 12 cylinders, uh, in our street and the guy uh, used to take his son to school in the next suburb every day. So that was my first association or my first look at it, a real Ferrari. It was, um, really left a big impression on me. Love at first sight? Really, yeah. I mean, you got four cylinder side valves in Austin's and things and here's a 12 cylinder car arrives and I thought, wow, this is, this is out of this world. And what about racing? How did you become involved at the track with Ferrari? Well, I started off, um, I built my own car and then I was asked to drive a Holden for, um, for a fellow and um, uh, I won 17 races out of 20 and so David Mackay approached me and he's the boss of Scuderia Veloce and um, he was very well connected with Ferrari and uh, with the Ferrari Formula One team and with um, uh, the hierarchy in Ferrari like Michael Parks and anyway, he, um, he uh, ordered and purchased a 250 LM Ferrari. And the car arrived here in um, um, December 1964. Its first race was uh, in February 1965 at Sandown Park in Melbourne. And uh, I was the guy who was chosen to drive the car. And I mean, that was sort of going from uh, unbelievable from a 48 Holden to an, you know, the latest V12 GT Ferrari. Do you remember the, the feeling at the time, what it was like to, to drive that Ferrari at Sandown in a race? Oh yes, well, I mean the noise the Ferrari make, there's nothing makes a noise like a 12 cylinder. Especially when it's behind you and it's got open exhaust. Because those of those we didn't have to have mufflers on them. And uh, it had open exhaust, 12 cylinders, and it used to rev to 8,000. And uh, the noise it made, people used to come down from the mountains to listen to it, just listen to the noise. Uh, and inside it was even better because you've got the, uh, all the valve gear, the chains and everything whirring around and it, uh, it was just such a sensational car to drive. And for you that was a, a start of a, a great association in motorsport with Ferrari that, that led you what, all over the world and to race against some of the greats. I mean, we, Jackie Stewart comes to mind and some amazing, Frank Gardner you raced against? Yeah, I raced against all those fellas, um, you know, Jimmy Clark and uh, uh, Jack Rabin. Um, yeah, uh, Bruce McLaren, all of those people I raced against, but not in Ferraris. That was in um, Tasman cars or Formula One type cars. But um, uh, I retired at the end of uh, 1967 and uh, had to get a real job. <laughs> not fair. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, I made a return to racing and I spent uh, nearly 10 years overseas uh, driving mainly Ferraris in historic races. So I drove um, six different uh, Ferraris when I was overseas, um, like works Ferraris, not road cars. I've driven heaps of road cars, but these were uh, Ferrari works cars that I drove. And uh, we have a fair amount of success overseas. Mm. What does the brand mean to you, Ferrari? Well, um, they're the only team that's been in Formula One since day one. Um, they. Uh, they're iconic, it's one of the biggest brands, the biggest badges in the world. Um, yeah, no, they're, uh, they're on their own. Uh, very emotional in the Formula One pits. <laughs> but, uh, they're, uh, yeah, they've had, their, uh, they've had their fair share of uh, successes as well, haven't they? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. What was the, um, how's the days of racing, your early days of racing compared to what we see now? How, how different was it? Oh, totally different, Mark. Absolutely, totally different because um, I used to wear a short sleeve shirt, um, uh, you know, well, I, I was in, in, New, in New Zealand for the, uh, the Grand Prix and um, Jimmy Clark came over to me and he said, you've got a nylon shirt on, he said, if you catch fire in the car, he said, the nylon will poison your bloodstream, he said, and it'll do more damage than the fire possibly, so uh, Jimmy, the, the guy he is, he came back with two pairs of fi uh, fireproof overalls and gave them to me. That's how concerned he was for my health. Gee. 
I don't know where you thought I was going to go off, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I, was, I was a wild child in those days. Yeah, and, and seat belts weren't, weren't that compulsory? Oh, no, no, well, we didn't wear seat belts. Um, the theory was in those days that um, um, if you crashed, you're better to be thrown out of the car than to stay in it if it, if it caught fire. Then uh, a lot of the guys were, um, they were burnt to, to death in their cars. So um, the theory in those days was you're better to be thrown out. Um, because we only had aluminium fuel tanks, that was another thing. Um, and like if, I, if you had a, had a shunt, so to speak, uh, the, the tent, tank was ruptured, the fuel had run out, and that would be a massive fire. But uh, these days they've got bags in them and, you know, they've got bladders and all sorts of things to stop that happening. Did the danger ever worry you at the time? Never even thought of it. Just thought about the bugger in front of me, how I was going to get him. <laughs> and most times you did. Hey? Yeah, got a couple. <laughs> how, do you, how do you think back on those days now? Great memories? Oh, fabulous memories. Uh, I cannot believe I did what I've done. Um, in fact, um, when I sat down and thought about it, I thought, my kids really don't know what I've done. Uh, and, and my grandkids would never know. So uh, I started to scribble a few things down and um, um, I was very lucky that um, Peter Robinson uh, saw my scribbles and um, he turned it into beautiful writing because he's, he's a, the ultimate professional. Um, he'd been a journalist for over 50 years and uh, Peter did a fabulous job and we, we had a lot of fun doing it too. Spencer, who was the, who do you, was the best driver you raced against, do you, do you think, that you saw on the track? Oh, without a doubt, Jim Clark. Mm. Mm. Why was that? Uh, Jimmy, well, I get emotional when I talk about Jimmy. He was such a good bloke, you know. Uh, and it hurt when he got killed. But anyway, um, he was such a good fella. Uh, not only was he the best on the racetrack, uh, he was the best bloke out of the car. Mm. Mm. Um, favourite car that you raced or drove? Did you, did you have a favourite that you think back, that was, that was just magic? Well, the car that you win the most races in is the best car you ever sat in. Um, and the 196 S Ferrari that I drove, I drove that at, um, uh, where did I drive? I drove it at uh, Magny Cour in France. I drove it at uh, Spa, Belgium, Laguna Seca. I mean, we won a lot of races with that little car. And uh, it was a fabulous car. I did a lot of the development work on it. And um, when we got to the first race in it was at Laguna Seca. When we got there, uh, straight out of the box, it was very, very quick. And uh, we qualified on pole. And, uh, there's a funny story. The bloke who was uh, beside me on the uh, on the start line, he said, "It's between you and me, Spencer." He said, um, "What do you think?" Uh, he said, "Can you knock it off a bit?" And my my team manager said, "Fucking go for it!" <laughs> <laughs> and just just as well he did because he was right there. He was he was uh, foxing a bit. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. yeah. Which happens, you know. Yeah. 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 Good old motorsport gamesmanship. Yeah. That's right. um, so was it? And the LM250 yes. you raced? Yes. What was that car like? Well, uh, that was the car we were talking about earlier. It was a fantastic car. I mean, the gearbox was sensational. You could, as fast as you move the lever, you could change gears yeah. up and down. And because uh, we've spoke about the noise, the noise was fantastic. It was a real buzz box to, to drive that car. It was a real glamour car. It was by far the most exciting Ferrari ever to come into this country. Wow. It was a big, big move. And uh, full credit to David Mackay, he did that. Mm. And then uh, behind us now, we've, we've got a car which is sort of um, designed along a similar line to the LM250. Yes. What are your thoughts? Well, it celebrates the, uh, the, the 250. It's quite different to the 250 in a lot of ways, but it's got some of the, the characteristics there, um, mainly in the, the paintwork and that. But it's uh, yeah, a lovely car, the Portofino. It's magic. I've, I've got two mates who've got them, and they are what a great car. Do you still love, uh, still love jumping behind the wheel, having a drive? Oh, yes, yes. Well, I was quite surprised. Um, I was invited to drive a, a Ferrari out of Eastern Creek. And um, I come flying down into the first corner and all of a sudden this thing going brim, brim, brim. And I thought somebody must be going to pass me. And the car was changing gear itself. <laughs> this, this is ridiculous. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> And I go out the corner and I jump on the throttle and I'm going, pum, pum, pum. Oh, that, that bloody thing's not running right. And then I find out that's the traction control coming in. You know? where's, it's all done for you. Where's, where's the art gone? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. beautiful.
Uh, such a beautiful car, Spencer. As you go around, you sort of you do get the classic feel that the, the LM250 Spirit is inside there, even right down to the stripe at the front. Yeah, the green racing stripe. Yes, well, that's right. Well, this um, green stripe was um, uh, David Mackay's idea. He uh, he um, started the race team Scuderia Veloce, and to note to note his cars from the others, he had the green stripe put on it, and. Um, uh, every race car that was at Scuderia Veloce had the green stripe. Yeah, it's amazing. Beautiful piece of history. Yes. And I know it's the same green stripe because it's right here on the, the front of this book about mm. your career and some of your great races, mm. uh, which I've got to say I have loved looking through because every time you turn a page there, there's another great memory and that really encapsulates your career. It does, yes. yes how, no. how did this come about? Uh, long story. It took about two years to put it all together. but. Um, I, uh, I started to scribble a few things for my kids because the kids, they thought, oh, Dad used to drive racing cars. <laughs> and that was it? <laughs> that was it. <laughs> right, okay. and, and the grandkids, they'd have no idea. So I thought, um, so I started to just scratch a few things out and um, um, I showed uh, Peter Robinson, who's a uh, international journalist and uh, uh, a fantastic uh, uh, writer. And I showed him and he said, oh, wow, this deserves a book. This is so good. So um, Peter and I spent a lot of time, I scribbled and he wrote and he made sense out of it, so made it readable. And uh, so there's about 50 years of my uh, motor racing career all uh, in the book. What, see that to you that's your memories and we almost didn't get it done, but for, for motorsport fans, there is tremendous, just amazing history in there. And to look through that and look through the names in there, the places you've been, the things you've done, the cars you've driven, mm. uh, it's like a little Bible, an important part of Australian motorsport history. So I'm so glad you did it. Thanks. Yeah, well, thank you, Mark. Um, it is, it's, uh, it's like a, a record of the uh, 60s and uh, 70s, uh, well, and to me, uh, historic racing in the 90s. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we did a lot. And um, anyway, we've tried to capture it all in the book. Beautiful. Come, come around, let's have a look. It is um, just beautiful shape. I mean, that's a beautiful thing about the Ferraris and the Portofino is just so beautifully designed. Yeah, it is, really is. Um, <clears throat> I've got two mates who've got these cars and I've done quite a few kilometers in them and uh, absolutely magic, yeah. really are, yes. You still get excited about them? Oh yes, yes. Um, I figured you I mean did. Oh, well, it's, uh, it's a bit of a, a lazy man's car, and you don't have to, uh, uh, no gear stick, you just uh, keep pulling the paddles up and down and uh, it does it all for you. It's like a do-it-yourself thing, isn't it? <laughs> um, Spencer, jump in, see what you think. Give me your, uh, your thoughts. What do, you, what do you think about the layout? Well, it's, it's, so, uh, it's a lot larger than the LM in here because the LM was a narrow car because they cut the frontal area down, so obviously the whole car was smaller. And uh, I don't know what a lot of these buttons are for, but um, we certainly didn't push the button there to start it up. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing now, though. The technology's yeah. amazing, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of cars have uh, copied Ferrari with that. But, um, and, you know, the uh, Matino thing here where you can dial in um, uh, whether it's wet or dry or whatever you want, or if you want a soft ride. I mean, it's, the technology is just absolutely amazing. Yeah, and yet it, it's all built on the spirit of the race car, isn't it? You know, you, can, you almost feel the passion with these cars. Well, it is. It's passion is the word. You know, Ferrari, it's, it's all about passion. And, you know, the upholstery, uh, you know, the stitching and the, the finishing here is incredible. I mean, the, the race Ferrari had none of this. I mean, it didn't have any, no carpets and no trim, everything, because uh, they had to make it as light as they could. Everything's out the door, you know, no, no door handles or anything. Um, but, uh, yeah, and uh, sort of um, gear stick in the middle and uh, do your best. Yeah, then you know, they'd take about 40 gallons in the tank, yeah. massive, two tanks, 20 gallons on each side. Um, uh, because it was a Le Mans car, it was designed to run 24 hours, and it did, it had run for 24 hours, yeah. Mm. It'd be fun to put this on the track. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is a real buzz drive. I have driven these things on the, on the track. Amazing. The, uh, well, the aero and the road holding and the brakes, the brakes are incredible. Is that what, what gets you about the modern car, how far it's come from, you know, from the cars that you raced that were, they were pretty basic at the time? Well, yes, uh, we thought having disc brakes was a big move, <laughs> a big move up, up the ladder, but uh, the brakes on these things are in incredible. I mean, you can, uh, you can just keep using it. Like, you know, you could run out of brakes in the cars when we were driving, but there's no way no one would run out of brakes in this car. And you use them on a car like this too, don't you? Oh, yes, you can go in so deep with these things and, uh, 
yeah, and uh, you can uh, just keep pulling the down <laughs> lever, and uh, it's the noise is sensational, isn't it? Yeah, no, yes, pretty yes, special. Yeah. yes. Um, and I guess you never lose that love of the brand, do you? Once you've got it, once you've got the history that you have with Ferrari, so that they all feel good. Yes, well, I did a lot of miles in these, um, well, in Ferrari race cars all around the world, uh, England, France, you know, uh, um, Germany, you know, Italy, and, uh, and America. I did, I raced you know, a lot of cars in all of those countries, and uh, Ferrari was the main brand. And we had a lot of success too, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of all the different cars you raced, which was the best? Well, the, the car that you win the most races in is the best car, isn't it? True. Yeah, the one that uh, gets you the most silverware is the one you, that you like. And uh, the car that uh, we won a lot of races in was a 196 S Ferrari. Like it's, uh, it was only a V6 front engine car, but uh, we, we could uh, knock off the, the front uh, 12 cylinder Ferraris in that. And um, yeah, we did a lot of development work on it though. And we had the thing really hopping. Yeah. Um, when you sit in this car, I just think about racing. What, um, what was your favourite race? What's been your greatest memory on the track, do you reckon? Um, oh, well, I think, um, I don't know, the, 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 um, uh, we ran the 196 at uh, uh, Spa in Belgium, uh, and we were the support race for the, uh, the Belgium Grand Prix. That was quite a buzz, a really big buzz to do that. Um, and, uh, you know, to go down through Eau Rouge, uh, which is the fastest corner in Formula One. It was unbelievable, yeah. Do you remember how fast you went through? I don't know, I was uh, going sideways and I wasn't looking at the speeder. <laughs> <laughs> Just holding on. <laughs> Just hanging on. In fact, it never had a speedo. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, only had a rev counter, a big rev counter in the centre and that was yeah. it, yeah. Gee, it's all that mattered. All that mattered, yeah. Spitz, it's so great to chat with you. It's so great to do it in this environment and around these beautiful cars, but congratulations on it, on a great history in motorsport. Yeah, thanks, Mark. It's uh, lovely to be here and talk about the, the, uh, the Ferrari brand.